Okay. Good. Okay. So, uh, the subject. What changes can we make to feel better? What changes can we make to alleviate some pain? What changes can we make if the doctor has said that we have a chronic condition and maybe even a long-term, more of an emergency condition, you know, a condition that has a disease process going on? I have known hundreds of people, not all of them directly, but they are friends of people I actually know, who have followed a simple diet and regained health in every area, in chronic conditions, in painful conditions of arthritis, bursitis, and inflammation, and edema, which is holding extra water on the body, um, uh, weight, uh, obesity. I have known people who with very simple changes in a very simple way in their diet and eating and in their lifestyle, they have turned around conditions that they never thought they could. And what I love to see in the 12-week workshops, and especially in the week-longs, where in one week we turn things around, to see people realizing, my goodness, all I had to do was eat just a few more fruits and vegetables, and I could feel this good. So for me, it is not a matter of telling you that you must change everything in your life to do with your food. It is a matter of just saying, what are the foods that really make a difference? So if we look at the foods that make a difference, we say, when we eat food, we are affecting the chemistry on the inside of our bodies. When we eat food, we're affecting the amount of water that we have inside our bodies. Those two facts really bring up the question, what am I going to serve myself? So the question is really the nutritional value of the food. Not only the nutrition in the food and the substances we're eating, but also the life in it. The plants are actually giving us vitality, and especially when we leave them in their raw condition. So not cooking them, not processing them, not preparing them in ways uh, microwaving, boiling, steaming, baking, all of those things change the live activity that's in the food. The vitality is in the live enzymes that are still working in the food when we consume it. So my recommendations in our week-longs, which we will be doing throughout the next year, every month, and in our 12-week workshops that we've done for many years, the process is really just having something very different in the morning when you wake up, uh, a fruit smoothie, something very, very simple, a few beautiful fruits that you throw into a blender, and you make a delicious breakfast. And the fruits have so much vitality and color that you can't help but be cheered up by them. Not only that, but the fruits have an amazing, completely available carbohydrate and caloric uh, intake into our bloodstream that allows us to have strength and vitality for five hours after a very large, most of a blender smoothie. And then you could say, well, what else would I need to do to really change my diet? And I would say, well, you want to add the fruits for the vitality, the strength, the vitamins, and the minerals that they contain. And you also want to, um, you also want to increase the greens that are in your diet. So, for example, having a lovely salad. Salads can be made in so many different ways, so many different tastes with dressings and so many different things that can be added to a salad to make it quite substantial. The truth that we don't always get told in this culture is that greens of themselves have something to offer us. It is not necessary to have a meat with every meal, to have dairy as, as part of your daily diet or weekly diet. That is not a necessary food for most people. So when I suggest to people, have a little bit of whatever you do regularly, but add in the fruits and the vegetables on a daily basis, and you will see immediate changes in how you feel in your life. And your body will change. So I would suggest that people add greens, leafy, bright greens in salads. When I teach about building a 
lanai-based garden or a garden right outside of your porch or a garden on your porch, which I will be doing in the next few weeks in my In the Kitchen with Alice broad, live broadcast, I will be showing you how to make a salad out of the garden that you've just created. So I look forward to showing you how simple it is to put together a live salad with some scallions and greens and bitter uh, herbs, all different flavors, and then to add the sweetness of just a fruit-based uh, dressing. The dressings that we find in the stores have usually three, four, five ingredients that are sugar-based. They are to sweeten the dressing. So people are often looking for the sweetness in a salad. So I will be showing some very simple dressings. That will be an entire session on In the Kitchen with Alice, just some simple dressings that are made from fruits and vegetables and blended and then poured over uh, a leafy green salad. Let me just see if we have a question here that's coming in. I, I love this question that just came in. Do you recommend juicing greens or eating uh, salads or soups? So in other words, um, is it recommended that you would juice them as opposed to eat them? The truth about juicing is we live in a culture where everything we eat is very dry. What that requires from the inside of the body is that the water that's needed to digest food is taken from our cells and put into our digestion, into the metabolism of food, so every dried thing that we eat requires water that we ordinarily have in our bloodstream and in our cells. And when we take that water from the body, then we get dried out. So we're really looking for the foods that have lots of water still in them. And the foods that are uncooked, that are in their raw state, are very juicy and full of, full of water. So when you hear people say, I went on a juice fast or I went on a juice diet, what they're really looking to do is have a lovely form of the juices of fruits and vegetables in a drink. And what are they getting? They're getting the live enzymatic activity of the fruits and vegetables that's still alive in the liquid. All the juicer is doing is squeezing that liquid from the fruit or vegetable. They're getting the nutrition that comes from the fruit and vegetable. The only thing that the juicer is doing is separating the pulp, the fiber, of that plant from the juice. So in a culture where we do so much that dries us out, a juice is a wonderful way to go. For those that love to chew and have a big meal that's made of greens and fruits and vegetables, um, that's a wonderful way to, to eat a meal. So it's a matter of the timing of the day. You might like a juice in the morning, you might like a juice in the late afternoon. Some people even have a really wonderful green juice before bed. So it's really a matter of preference. And I will be showing juicing and smoothies and all of those things on the upcoming In the Kitchen with Alice broadcast. Let me see if we have another question here. OK, let's have a look. Um, OK. All righty. I, uh, I want to address what are the nutritional foods? They are the foods that come mostly in their whole form from directly from nature. So if you have wheat, if you have rice, if you have barley in their wholesome nature directly from the fields and put through a thresher and given to us so that we can either cook it or sprout it, we're getting the grain with all of the qualities that come with it. If we eat pretzels and crackers and cookies and all of the amazing amount of processed flour uh, products that come to us in the American diet, standard American diet, so the buns that come with your burger and the cookies that are served and the crackers and pretzels and all of those things, the flour that's given to you is not only pro highly processed and had additives added to it that are not necessarily nutritional, but it has been bleached. So you have to ask yourself whenever you eat those things, what is the nutrition I'm actually adding to my body? If the flour and the grain has been so highly processed that it doesn't have any of the nutritional value that was in it when it was growing, 
what am I actually giving to my body? I'm giving myself something that is in a very dry form and it requires all the water for my own digestion to digest it, which means I will have um, I will have dehydration actually going on by eating the dried, heavily dried foods. And then we add salt to that equation and now our cells are soaked in salt. That is not a healthy condition. And the edema in this country of holding water and the salt in the cells and the lack of fresh food that has the water element already in it, straight from nature. These are the things that are missing from a nutritional diet. To go further, we say, well, what, what is really in a nutritional diet? Do I need to have meat, for example, in my diet every day? The answer to that question comes, in my experience, from watching hundreds and thousands of people who follow a mostly plant-based diet and do not require meat. And the reason I mention this is not to suggest that everyone watching my show change from eating, uh, having a meat-based diet, a heavily animal product diet. Um, it is really to say there is a way to lighten up the way you live. And if you will eat more fruits and vegetables, you will find that they satisfy you in ways you couldn't imagine unless you had more plant-based meals, more menus that involved grains, beans, seeds, nuts, vegetables, and fruits. So I am always encouraging people to try something a little different, more like how we lived 100 and 200 years ago. When you look at the cultures around the world, they are not eating a large amount of dairy or a lot of meat in their diets. Uh, if you go to those cultures and see the quantity of meat compared to our culture, we are eating huge numbers of animals per person in one lifetime. So I'm just recommending that you lighten up the load that you're putting on your liver and putting through your bloodstream and putting through your digestion and have a much lighter fare. And I find that the people who are willing to even go through a very short time of trying this will have immediate vitality and an immediate change in a lot of the conditions that are causing them true distress. So back to the question and the subject of the day. Why are we talking about what we're eating? We're talking about it because so many people do not have the kind of living they're looking for. Uh, it is so strained in this uh, fast pace that we live these days. It is, um, a lot of people feel heavy. A lot of people can't sleep properly. These are to do with the foods that we're eating during the day. Those foods are helping to balance the organs and bring us into a sense of peacefulness so that we do have sleep at night. Those are rhythms that are affected very drastically. Very, they're very sensitive rhythm, rhythms. The circadian rhythms that affect sleeping and waking and uh, calmness and a feeling of vitality. Those rhythms are affected very much by what we put in our mouths. So when we have the uh, high sugar, caffeine-filled caffeine, caffeine -filled sodas and sports drinks and all of those things that are on the market these days, um, large amounts of coffee, those things are giving an adrenaline rush to the heart and they are giving us a boost in a, a sugar that we cannot, um, that does not give us sustained even energy. It actually spikes the energy and then drops us. And over time, people develop diabetes and all kinds of sugar-related bloodstream issues uh, that have to do with how the blood sugar is, is affected by the foods they're eating. So I am interested to hear any questions. I especially invited people from my 12-week workshop to ask questions that they may have about things they did not resolve during the 12 weeks that they suddenly realize, you know, there was an area I really didn't get covered and I'd like you to address it. So I'm just going to look here and see who has sent some uh, questions to me that I can answer for you. Let's have a look. Okay. Alrighty. Quite a few people in our 12-week uh, workshop have been um, have had blood sugar issues. Oh, one more question came in. I, I know I want to address the blood sugar um, for sure. 
let's see here. Um, okay. The blood sugar issue is, people often think of it as, I snack at night, I go get junk food, and I mess up all my blood sugar. The truth in my thinking is, no, you want to get the things in the beginning of your day started off right, because you give the blood sugar and the bloodstream what it needs in terms of a level blood sugar for the day, and you will not have the cravings. Those junk foods, or what people refer to as junk food, those foods that are high sugars, that are processed flours that turn immediately to sugar, those foods are really calling to you simply because you're you're crying out for the carbohydrates and the sugar that is in the fresh food. Fresh fruits are one of the best delivery of those things that give us energy. And so a blood sugar issue is really an energy issue. So I say to people, yes, the fats will give you strength over a longer period of time, but the things that are going to give you the carbs and the vitality for your day are in the fruits. And so those who are doing the grain diets, almost every healing diet involves either sprouted grains or cooked grains. The grains are more complex carbohydrate, and they require a lot of chewing to transform the, the more complex carbohydrate into a more simple sugar. And so when you are looking to really shift the way the bloodstream is dealing with sugar in the body, you really want to give it the foods as they were made in nature to help with those conditions. So I just want to say a lot of people focus on what I shouldn't be eating and I say no focus on what you would love to eat. <laughs> Let's make something delicious and see if we can't shift how you feel about what you're eating and what you're attracted to. Now I did hear a ding. Let me check my phone. I think some people are not putting it in the chat box but Let's see here. Okay. Uh, okay. Very good. Okay. So a woman has asked a very interesting question here. She wants to know how to get started using the most nutrient dense food to start her day. That's a very good question. When you eat the grains that are a more complex sugar, those are very good for the end of a day. They're the ones that are going to work on you in your metabolism at the end of your day where you might be settling down more, becoming more relaxed for the evening, and really preparing for eventually sleeping. So I say use the more carbo complex carbohydrates at the dinner time. In the day, we want the vitality and the strength that's coming straight from the sun and straight from the fruits. And if you do some carbohydrates earlier in the day, just make sure that they're on the lighter version, the more complex carbohydrates like a grain salad, and add to it some zest and vitality of fresh vegetables and fresh fruits. Uh, to begin the day with the most den nutrient dense foods, the fruit in the morning is a wonderful way to start for a variety of reasons. Uh, the fruits are giving us the nutrients we need for the day, the vitality, and they are also the cheeriest thing. And what I find is that when people satisfy their fruits and their greens at lunch, and then a variety of vegetables during the day, perhaps making a wonderful soup, those things are going to help in, in uh, getting the nutrients that you need in the day so that what you crave is actually oriented more to what you have already received. When you have not given your body the nutrients you need, then you will be seeking them all during the day. So then it will be a matter of if my energy is low, I need a stimulant. If, my, um, if I feel hungry, I'm going to eat a huge amount of food wherever I can get it. So what I say is Fill your refrigerator, as we've seen on In the Kitchen with Alice. I did a whole presentation on what to fill your refrigerator with. Fill them with the freshest fruits and vegetables you can find. Uh, they don't always have to be organic, but if you can find organic food, that's wonderful. You can support your local farmer. And then 
prepare the foods during the day that are simple menus, simple recipes that are very tasty and that especially give you the carbohydrates and the blood sugars you're really looking for. And then as far as the salts and fats that we crave in our, as people have been questioning about diabetes in my questions here on my phone and, and in the chat, it is really about um, finding ways to make things tasty that are very simple and that if you follow In the Kitchen with Alice, you'll see me preparing on a weekly basis. Very simple recipes that give a lot of flavor, a lot of zest. Um, some of them will be more on the salty side. Some of them will have a little bit of the fats that come from one of the wonderful foods in nature that have fats in their most perfect form. Avocados, nuts, seeds, coconut, a little bit of oil. So there are ways to find the very sustaining things. And people talk about protein as a real concern. The truth about protein in meats is that the animals are delivering all of the work of their bodies to us. And that's wonderful. And there was a time when that kind of living in parts of the world where it's absolutely necessary to be sustained by the animals. For us, the need is not so great to rely on the animals. The animals are giving us fully the full protein what we do then with it is to break it down into its amino acids and then it becomes available to us. The fruits and vegetables have those amino acids in them and we then build the proteins from them. So there's this activity that goes on when you eat a plant-based diet that's very different than if you are just simply given what the animals are giving you. So I just, just suggest that if people are eating a meat diet, um, just eat a little less and find the farmers and the people who are distributing meats where the animals have been well taken care of. I think that's very, very important. Let's see what other questions. I love this question that someone has asked about juicing. Is the juicing easier on the body when you've had illness or when the body is trying to heal? Anything that does not require the digestion to go through so much of a process is easier on it. When we have a processed flour, that's not more help. The processed flour just becomes hard in the intestine and requires our water to, from our own cells to digest it. That's not helping us to highly process our food. Nor is it necessarily helping us to highly cook our food. Um, some cooked food is wonderful, but to have foods that are already in a easily digestible form, bioavailable is, how, is the word that's used these days. When those foods are given, then the body can relax and then it starts to heal and utilize the things that are coming in their most natural form. This relaxes the entire metabolism. This is really the basis for helping someone through an illness. It's why when you go to the healing diets, whether they be cooked or raw food healing diets, the foods are very um, simple, uh, very directly from whole foods from nature, and very simple on the digestion. So yes, in answer to the question of whether juicing is helpful to ease the digestion, it is, because you're not having the pulp and the fiber to have to work as hard in the, in the digestive tract. And those are really for people who have been many, many years eating a standard American diet. In those people, the digestion is sort of clogged up and it needs a flush, needs to be cleaned. But you want to do this in a very gentle way. You want to really change anything you're doing very gently and really take careful steps, just the steps that will give you a sense I think I like this diet that has more fruits and vegetables in it. I like the foods that have vitality and I feel more vital by eating them. So it's really a matter of being willing to try new things. And I really wanted to mention that before we get any further that in our last menus and tips for nutritional renewal, we referred to those three main rules. I thought I'd repeat them here since they're so helpful and especially for my workshop people. If you're starting over with your nutrition, you want to eat really as much of the fresh foods, fruits and vegetables as you can. It's not a diet to limit what you eat. It's not a diet of watching calories or carbs or any of that. 
It's a diet of eating as much of the vital food as you feel you want to eat. So that is one thing I wanted to mention. I also wanted to mention that it isn't a matter of watching the, the sugars in natural foods. Uh, some people say, well, this one's high glycemic, I shouldn't touch it. But they'll turn around and they'll have pretzels or they'll have something else, cookies or cakes or breads. Those things turn to immediate sugar. Some of those people even are doing alcohol. And so what I say about the things that come from nature is you really do not have to watch the sugars. What you'll find is that when you eat a whole apple, the fiber in the apple and all of the ingredients in the apple are working just perfectly for the bloodstream. So you really have nothing to worry about in terms of your blood sugar going off. The truth is that over time, if you eat the natural foods in their natural form, the blood sugar, instead of spiking and dropping, it becomes an even up and down. When you eat, your blood sugar goes up a little bit. And when you rest and digest, it goes down. And you eat again and it goes up. And that is the natural course of receiving the energy from your food. And then thirdly, I just wanted to say, this trying things that are new. That's really what this session is about. And I'd like to give a recipe or two um, in answer to some specific questions people have asked uh, that address just trying something new, something different than you have done before. You will find that your taste buds change. Um, interesting. What about warming cooked dishes to have every now and again, like casseroles and baked vegetables? As I was saying about soups and grain dishes and baked vegetables and all of those wonderful things that are uh, really taking the wholesome foods straight from nature and then doing a little preparation, those are wonderful and sustaining foods. And many of the healing diets prepare lots of cooked food in the diet and people change and uh, overcome incredible disease processes by e eating simply wholesome, well-prepared uh, food. As far as um, doing that so that you do it on a regular basis, have something available, you might cook a casserole and decide the simplest way to have regular meals where I don't have to cook every single night is to really just put some into a freezer, put it into the refrigerator, and just simply warm it up. What I do uh, ask that people try is to not use the microwave so much. The microwave really does change the food and it changes in a way that really is not nutritionally helpful to us. So I suggest that people simply use you know, the stove or the oven and warm up foods that they have prepared ahead of time and that way instead of having to rely on TV dinners or going out to eat or fast food, you can prepare a dish that you really enjoy and put some of it away in the freezer or put it in the refrigerator and just reheat it. So the cooking of foods is, um, I'm not avoiding cooked foods here. Uh, many people who ask questions on my, on my meetups and uh, in the different events that I put together are asking uh, really about the raw food diet because it's so popular now to try something different that really gives people energy. And I highly recommend that everyone add fresh raw fruits and vegetables to your diet. This is one of the fastest ways to heal. These foods are in their most vital and most helpful form. They are um, giving the, the nutrition and the enzymatic activity in the most bioavailable way. And that is why the raw fresh fruits and vegetables are so, so much sought after these days. Um, okay. I um, had someone ask me about different ways to cook food, crock pots and pressure cookers. Wonderful question. It's lovely when you can have a few utensils that do it all. <laughs> For those who would like to have a, a prepared meal at the end of a day, a crock pot is a very safe way. A crock pot is one of those big pots, about this, this tall, and it's plugged into the wall and it's on such a low heat that you could put in all the wonderful vegetables and some grains, maybe even some beans, 
into the pot, or even a pile of noodles. Um, there are some wonderful buckwheat noodles, um, soba noodles, udon is a kind of noodle that you can find at the health food stores, wonderful noodles that have plenty of the grain in its best form in them. And if you put those into a crock pot at the end of the day, you have a wonderful meal. Uh, it's like being cooked for by your mom. <laughs> you get home and the whole house is filled with aromas and you have everything that you need in the pot for a beautiful meal, a beautiful dinner. And then there are the pressure cookers. Those are wonderful for those that can get a rice cooker that's a pressure cooker. You can create an entire pot of rice and eat off of that rice for several days and even put some in the freezer and then just reheat. So there are wonderful ways to make life so much easier in terms of having food available and not having to cook every single day. And as far as the prepared fresh fruits and vegetables, that is really the purpose of, of a lot of the sessions that I will be doing on In the Kitchen with Alice. It's a way of saying, we forgot how fast we can make a meal. We forgot how quickly we can prepare something that's absolutely delicious and uh, that's fresh and that um, you know almost tastes like dessert, but it's, it's the substances and the nutrition of a meal. So let's see what other questions we have. Love to see what else people are wondering about these days. Okay, let's see. Um, alrighty. Some of the people have not attended all of our meetups. Our meetups have involved being with um, two different practitioners who are giving information about ways to help the body. One is doing it nutritionally. From her own experience, she healed herself of, of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma for a stage. And she did it with food, and she did it with a lifestyle change. She decided, I want to live a life where I am calm, peaceful, where I am in the sunlight, where I get to walk along the beaches, where I can really have a haven. And because she made that choice, she changed everything in her life. She gave up the work she was doing. She moved to a beautiful climate, actually here on the west coast of Florida. She decided to take up a quiet, meditative practice. She decided to make sure that she had humor and good people around her. And what happened in this process of healing herself was she became aware, I want to help others. Out of that desire of helping herself came the desire to help others and to really show people it is not so challenging. The changes in healing that happen from the diet and from the lifestyle can turn an entire life around. She had stage four cancer. And what she found was the, the more wholesome the foods, the more that she ate the fresh foods and the whole foods from nature in their more simple form, the more calm she felt and how she came out of fear. The fear that is instilled in people in this culture from their diseases, from their chronic conditions. If you have uh, neuropathy, if you have diabetes, if you have these conditions, you can never change them, they'll just get worse. What a terrible message. There are many, many people who simply change what they're eating every day. And they change the way they think and the way they converse with others and who they have around them and what kind of behavior they allow in their life from other people and they really decide I will have a calm life and I will make that for myself. What I tell people is come to my workshops, come to my week-longs, put yourself on a juice fast, <laughs> try something new with regard to a fresh plant-based diet and what you will find is you will have more calm. You will have more steady energy through the day. The energy will be heightened. You will have more creativity. And you will think clearer. Your sinuses will clear. Your allergens will disappear. And you'll sleep better at night. So these are the reasons in answer to our question of the day. Why are we talking about food? Why are we doing anything with our diets? And the reason is to really clear up these conditions that plague Americans everywhere. 
It's interesting, this question of cholesterol. Some doctors believe that the cholesterol-changing medicines are, well, they promote them. Obviously, they believe in them. And others really feel that those are not such good medicines. These are the doctors that are coming to these conclusions. They say, avoid some of those medicines. They're not really very good for you. So you say to yourself, how can I really work with the fats in the body, the triglycerides, the, the question of cholesterol, um, the plaque in the arteries, all of these things that are building up from eating a high amount of dairy products, which are coming from an animal, and a high amount of uh, meat that are coming from the animals. So we're eating the density of an animal body, and we're eating the, the um, fats and proteins at the quantity that they come in the mother's milk of a cow. She is creating a huge animal in a very short time. So her milk is very different than the milk of a human mother. Her milk is to make a huge cow. So it has lots more fat and lots more protein. So when we say to ourselves, why are we eating the thing that creates such a huge thing in nature, like the animal life, um, we have to ask ourselves, what, what's happening when we eat all that dairy? What's happening when we eat all of that meat and the fat that comes from proteins and, I'm sorry, from animal foods? What's happening when I eat the proteins from the animals instead of building them from the amino acids of plant-based diet? What's happening is we're clogging the insides of our bodies and we're accumulating the fat on the outsides of our bodies as well. Some metabolisms don't show everything on the outside, so this stuff is going on on the inside. And the body can't utilize it. The liver can't process it quickly enough. The intestine is too sluggish and can't eliminate well enough. So we literally, over the years, accumulate these fats. So I say, eat the fats in nature. Eat them in their better form. Eliminate meat for a period of time, just to see how you feel. Why not? Uh, avocados, coconut, uh, a spritz of olive oil. Olive oil is the squeezed oil from many olives. We don't need that much oil. We can spritz it onto whatever we're using the oil for. It brings out lovely flavors. The warmth of the fats are helpful to the human body and necessary. So when we find them in more plant-based versions of those fats, the cholesterol, the plaque, the triglyceride numbers that are so high, they all come down and they settle down. And people level out and get a better cholesterol number, a better triglyceride number, and they get what they need from nature. So I just say, just limit the amount of animal food that you're eating and you will have a wonderful bunch of numbers to show your doctor. You know, the question of high blood pressure is also there. High blood pressure, um, pressure in the eyes, glaucoma, uh, pressure from edema, just being swollen um, from having so much sodium in the cells and having really almost like an allergic reaction to, to the strain of life. That holding water, that holding fats in the fat cells on the outsides of the body to protect the organs, and for those who don't have a metabolism that stores the fat around the, the body and the outer part of the body, then the, the chronic condition becomes internal and the pressure internal builds up. So when we clog the bloodstream, when we clog the liver with too many fats, when the arterial, all of the arteries, the beautiful circulatory system is building the plaque, from the heavy foods, from the dairy products, from the animal fats. Those things are building a pressure in the body that is not only physical, but is also on our own um, inner experience. When people are highly um, filled with sodium and have edema, when people are obese, when people have their blood sugars going up and down and dropping them, these things are creating emotional states that are very hard to have to counter every single day. They build depressive feeling. They build lethargic feeling. Then you get arthritic uh, experiences in the body or inflammation, and then you have pain. 
pain around the bones is arthritis, inflammation anywhere is painful. So these pressures that are coming, including high blood pressure, these are coming because we are eating so many things that the body cannot digest very well at all. <laughs> but we have to change it. And a little bit of change will just lead you further down the road because it's going to be so much fun. It's going to really knock your socks off when you try anything of what I'm speaking about. Because what you're going to find is all the numbers you show the doctor change. Uh, the doctor is going to be delighted with you. If you have a regular doctor and that doctor may have suggested a few nutritional things or maybe he never brought up nutrition, it's probably because he's so discouraged about how many people ignore it. So I'm really here to say try what can happen with the diet because our bodies are taking in these things and creating the life we experience both physically and emotionally. So I've, I've been delighted with these questions. Anybody else have another question for me? I'd love to answer. <laughs> so as far as this, yeah, the, the high blood pressure, there are so many foods that have the sodium in, in the food itself. And one of the things I, I'm really looking forward to doing, it'll be in one of my next you know, few In the Kitchen with Alice sessions. Find me on YouTube, In the Kitchen with Alice. The broadcast is weekly. I am going to demonstrate how to make lovely blended dressings, syrups, things that add to a dish that's fruit or vegetable based. Um, the, uh, those things will have the parts of different plants that add sodium and saltiness to a dressing, that add sweetness to a dressing, that add any kind of flavor that we're looking for and craving to a dish. All of those things are in nature. Hundreds of fruits, hundreds of vegetables, and hundreds of different foods that are not even the, the grains, the seeds, the nuts. The variety is amazing. And so all of these different sessions of In the Kitchen with Alice, as well as this weekly broadcast, I will be sharing uh, particularly how to make dishes that are not only exciting, fun to eat, delicious, fun to share with others, but are really turning your life around. Now this last question that came in the form of salt. Um, the iodized processed salts that we find in the store are not being utilized properly in the body. We are having more high blood pressure in this country than all the Western country, countries are experiencing the same thing because we are eating more and more of the same, a similar diet. Um, we're, we're passing fast food to the rest of the world, so it's really spreading. The processed salts are very different than the salt that you find in celery. In celery and in nature, the plant is coming with just the amount of this and just the amount of that in the right formulation for it to be utilized by the bloodstream to be given over to our blood and utilized by all the, all the parts of the body. Sodium and potassium and all of those things that transverse the, the cell structures are communicating everything that the body needs to know about how to function properly. When we have a diet where we are, um, we are giving way too much salt that's processed into the bloodstream, Things are, are changing drastically for us. And although we can go many, many years before we experience that high blood pressure has just gotten out of hand, or cholesterol, or triglycerides, or whatever it is, diabetes with the blood sugars changing so, so drastically and not being in control, being out of the range that's normal for human functioning, when those things are happening, it's usually that we can go a long period of time sort of abusing all of these tender, beautiful organs that we have and really kind of abusing the mechanisms and chemistry that, ha that takes place, the life that takes place in the blood. When we change to a salt that is more medicinally based, it, when I say medicinally, I mean it's more like it is in nature. You can use many different kinds of things that are salted. There are some wonderful things in the macrobiotic diet, which is a healing diet from the Orient. In that diet, we have 
pickled apricots called umeboshi plum. We have miso soup, which is a soybean, a fermented soybean that has salt added to it. These salts, um, a wonderful form of, of soy sauce that's in a better form than you find it in most of the processed soy sauces uh, in the restaurants. They have none of the additives and the salt has gone through a process that makes it completely bioavailable and actually very helpful. A lot of the workshops I give, I utilize salts in a very different form, uh, coming from these literally ancient traditions of how to utilize salt and foods together. And these are very medicinally helpful. They can balance out a condition like that. You can use an umeboshi plum in a drink and completely clear up the sinuses and give strength to someone that is experiencing a cold or a flu. So it's um, not only helping to shift the salt balance in the body, but it's also giving a strength to the body. It has a certain energy to it that can help balance a condition. So I am amazed at how beautiful and interesting all of these questions are. Um, so I would never say that salt is bad. I would only say that the amount of salt that comes in every single processed food in America, almost all of them, have a huge amount of salt in them. And even if the salt is limited, you're getting salt from like everything. So you're literally creating a, um, cells that are full of the density of salt. And that's not necessary. So when we look at these plant foods, we're getting the nutrients in just the amounts that they're needed. So when we add all different fruits and vegetables together and come up with these delicious varieties with all the different tastes, salt, sweet, sour, bitter, and pungent, hot, we're really utilizing just how they come in nature. They are already having all those flavors in them. And we just need to find delicious ways to put them together. I did want to address one recipe relevant to a few different questions. One has to do with utilizing salt. One has to do with minerals. And one has to do with creating really interesting things that are new and different that a person may not have experienced before. And this is what's called a hiziki salad. It is a salad made from a very stringy seaweed that comes out of the oceans. I recommend a wonderful company in Maine where the man literally has an entire community of people who have apprenticed with him and who pull the seaweeds out of the water without using a boat that has paint on it, an engine that has oil or gas going into the water. He has literally thought through the process of taking the seaweeds and not harming the waters. So he's a wonderful community, Maine Seaweed Company. And I want to mention the seaweeds because the seaweeds are coming from the sea. And the sea has very sim similar constituents to the human blood. So when we eat sea vegetables, even occasionally fish, raw or cooked, uh, we are really gaining from the sea the nutrients that are there, as well as the minerals. It's a wonderful way to gain your minerals in your diet. So there are different ways to do seaweeds, and I would never want to discourage someone by giving them only one recipe and they try that and they just can't stand it, and then they never try using seaweed again. There are ways to use seaweed where you put a piece of it in your beans while you're cooking your beans, or making a casserole, making a soup. It dilutes completely and it just thickens it and gives it a wonderful, um, slightly salty flavor to the soup or casserole dish. Um, you can cook it even with your grains the seaweed will give over what it has in it to the water while you're cooking your grain. So this hiziki salad recipe is this. You take a, a pile of hiziki um, seaweed, which is dark and looks stringy, almost like hair, and you soak it. And then you use the hiziki that's wet and you put it in a bowl and you squeeze lemon, over, lemon juice over it. So you might want to do two teaspoons of lemon juice. And maybe up to two teaspoons of a wonderful shoyu, which is a soy sauce that is particularly well processed, fermented soy, soy sauce. And so you have your lemon, which is sour, and you have your uh, soy sauce, which is salty, and then your seaweed, which has also a little bit of saltiness. So these are wonderful salts. 
And then if you cut up a scallion, the green part of a scallion or two, and chop that into the salad. A wonderful salad. For those that can take a little bit of oil, not a problem. A little bit of sesame oil would be nice. Some people eat a toasted sesame oil or a raw olive oil. Just a little bit of a fat added to it can give it a wonderful flavor and really bring out the best in the, in the seaweed. So that is for those who are brave and would like to try a seaweed dish that they have never tried before. Upcoming, I'm going to be showing some tropical fruits from Florida in, my, in the Kitchen with Alice on YouTube. So please join me there. I'm also on Google Plus and on Twitter. My website is Whole Life Wellness Seminars. Dot com. So visit my website and I will be sharing how to do some planting soon, how to do some special dressings, some special syrups that can be made from fruits, and especially some tropical fruits are upcoming in our sessions. I want to introduce to people to things that are new and different that they have not tried. Um, you'd be surprised how your life can change one, from one invitation to a new fruit or vegetable dish. See here. Okay. Um, this person was asking me about an ebook that I've mentioned in my session in the kitchen with Alice. I've been writing a book, and it will come out shortly. And it is inclusive of all of the thoughts and the steps that are part of my 12-week workshops. So for those who are part of this workshop, or the last one, and may have missed parts of it, um, it will be a chance to read those things in a book. And they will have lovely pictures. And in fact, um, I am really giving the steps to move your own self along slowly and gently through a process that will truly change your life. So my ebook In the Kitchen with Alice, is upcoming. So I wanted to mention that. And if you pay attention to my Whole Life Wellness Seminars um, uh, website, you'll see that. Below, when this broadcast gets uh, the recording is put up, you will see a connection to what is called a Kiva link. Kiva is a wonderful company that helps all kinds of people who are trying to do good things in the world. And I am in a fundraising part of my business plan. and. I would love any help that anyone would like to offer. Uh, the Kiva link will be below um, this recording when it goes live on YouTube. And there you can just click on it and add $5 or add a little bit of money to, to our endeavors. And basically, I'm really just trying to get the word out to more people. And I'm doing it on the web. So I would appreciate any support you can give. I have thoroughly enjoyed your questions. I really appreciate it when people have that kind of interest in their own health. And um, many of us know people who are not as well as we are. And um, it's wonderful to learn new things that can really help others. So I appreciate you coming, and I look forward to our next sessions. Uh, we meet um, once a month on this menus and tips for nutritional renewal. And weekly, I show on YouTube, a live broadcast in the kitchen with Alice. Looking forward to seeing you again. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more of these sessions. And they're more demonstrative. Uh, that program is really me presenting, this is how to do this. This is how to prepare this meal. This is how to prepare this recipe. This is how to make a beautiful meal for a bunch of guests, or make a festive drink, or make a delicious smoothie. And these are the simple ways you can really change your life. So thank you so much for coming out. I appreciate you watching Menus and Tips for Nutritional Renewal. Thank you.